So hello everyone and welcome to episode three of The Familiar Realm. My name is Anna Fleming. And I'm Katie Neese. And we're very excited to be here today with Alexander Martin and Morgan Mullen, two artists and founding members of the Peoria Guild of Black Artists, which is based out of Peoria, Illinois. So welcome Alexander, welcome Morgan. Thank you so much for taking time to chat with us today. Um, and yeah, we're, we're happy to have you here. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're happy to be here. <laughs> so maybe we can start with like just kind of basic introductions if you want to tell um, everyone about who you are as individual artists, like maybe what your, your practice kind of looks like, and then also your role within the Peoria Guild of Black Artists. I go first. Uh, okay. I'm Morgan Mullen. I'm a graphic designer. Um, I am the secretary uh, in the guild and the treasurer. Um, I, outside of the guild, I work in the healthcare, uh, sector right now doing a lot of COVID-19 things. And, um, I run a store called Mad Hat Mo, uh, where I make, uh, enamel pens, prints, and, um, more stuff coming for blurred culture and stuff like that. And I am Alexander Martin. Uh, I'm on the board and one of the founding members Onside Morgan, um, outside the guild, I do a lot of mixed media and installation-based work. I my degree was in printmaking, um, but now I do a lot of performance, installation, and other types of work. I'm also a drag entertainer um, who also works in the public health sector, uh, doing HIV prevention and care, uh, which ties in a little bit to my practice in looking at queer history and identity. And we work. Yeah, we do work together. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All the time. Every job we have. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome that there's so many multifaceted aspects to what you do. And also, thank you so much for your contribution, you know, with all of that, with the public health and, and everything and the arts. I mean, so important. And that's amazing. Oh, well, thank thanks. you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. Um, and so I want to kind of segue too into our you know, intro, first question kind of um, area. And um, how do how did the guild get started? Um, and was this an idea that had been in the works for a while? Um, and could you maybe expound on that a little with the pandemic maybe, or like kind of give us maybe a picture on that and how that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> it sort of, I wouldn't say it was in the works for a long time, but the people that initially started the guild had been working together um, a few times. Like Morgan and I have been in shows together with some of our other artist friends, um, Brenda Gentry, um, another one of the founding members. Um, we had all worked together and uh, we're tired of only being shown, like seeing each other during Black History Month. A lot of the artists in town are kind of uh, reclusive have their own practices but the only time we ever show together was like black history month or there's like an lgbtq plus show or something um it was like the only time we got to celebrate each other's work and last year after the murders of george floyd and breonna taylor um we were upset and angry but it was it was so every day in our community that like we're like oh no like this is another one but what was different this time was everyone was listening like I had people reaching out asking about like anti-racist literature and people from my hometown like um, apologizing for experiences in the past. And we're like, people are listening right now. People are home right now. People are stuck at home because of the pandemic and they're paying attention and they're listening. And so we thought to strike while the iron's hot. It's like, if we wanna be heard as black creatives, people are looking at our community now. So now's the time to do it. And so that's sort of, started, it was a space to sort of commiserate and share experiences with each other. Um, but then it really rapidly grew after that. I think something something like that is like so inspirational and I think it really, it almost creates like this kind of pressure cooker so people can really focus on, you know, like voices and, and what these, these issues bring to light. And I think that's really awesome that you brought, you know, you saw that as an opportunity and um, just a perfect time to kind of get that out there, um, the message and like just how important it is for, um, you know, the community to kind of come together. 
as far as after the wake of George Floyd murders and th the murder and things like that. Um, that's that's really great. Um, and I, that was my next question kind of was like the inspirational aspect of it, which you, you know, you already addressed that. Um, and, and yeah, like, did you model it after any other, other um, inspirational things you saw? Or was it just kind of like this? So I think it was really organic because the group was just made for us. We, I don't, like the whole idea was just like friends coming over and we were all artists. We were all hanging out talking. And then Alex posted a picture <laughs> on Instagram. And so like, we knew we would be a group, but it was just like, not like a group to just be like, oh, we're gonna do all this stuff outside of ourselves, but more a group to just hang out socially and like get ideas um, together, mm -hmm. like kind of bounce ideas off each other. So I guess it was more of an accident. Yeah, <laughs> so. we wanted to sort of like band together, like we wanted to bring like another Harlem Renaissance to Peoria. So like artists working and collaborating together, sharing resources, talking, vibing, making work, but then we were addressing a need that we didn't quite understand the <laughs> depth of. And we sort of fell into being an organization doing, like we're in the process of applying for nonprofit status, but like we fell into being an organization that does a whole lot of things in the community. And it sort of like, it grew organically from that initial meeting, from that initial, we call them vibe checks. <laughs> it sort of grew organically from that. But then we just realized when we started sharing stories, because we were all finally together in the same space, um, when we started sharing stories, just like, we wanted to show folks that A, this is a viable place to live in if you're creative, especially for black creatives. And then B, show young folks and well, everybody that being a creative is an, is an option. Like being an artist is an option anywhere, but also in Peoria, because um, we have a lot of members who did stuff with education and other things. Um, and so we just want to show folks that like, hey, we're here and you can be here too. You can do this. We actually, one of the, stories we have from starting was um, Morgan and I did an exhibition together, if you want to talk about the people that came in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, before we even got together, a year before, I think. Yeah, it was 2019. Yeah. Um, Alex asked me to do an exhibition, and our other friend, Cam, who's also in the guild from a distance now, because he's a student, and he graduated. Um, Alex asked us to be in a show and I never was in a show before so I had to make all like pieces for it and that was fun because no one ever asked me to make anything for myself so I got to do that and while we were setting up I was painting in the space with the projector at night so across the street was a restaurant and a lot of people um, in the community that live nearby were at the place um, watching me outside painting and stuff so we got to talk with them and invite them to the exhibition that was coming up and then uh, when the day came, we didn't see the people we invited. So we like noticed that they weren't there, but we didn't, I never saw them like outside or anything. So like, a couple months later in the winter time, cause it was summer then, uh, we go to the restaurant and the guy's there and he's like, oh, y'all were the ones doing the exhibition. And I was like, yeah, where were you at? Like we invited <laughs> you. And he was like, oh, I saw it. But it was so many people there and I didn't know if I was invited. And I was like, I literally invited you. <laughs> but it was like such a different crowd than what used, like they weren't people from the neighborhood. So yeah. we brought, like people came to see our exhibition from outside, but then the neighborhood didn't feel like they were invited to an event in their own neighborhood. So yeah, because we, it was, I think we did the opening during the first Friday and a lot of the art community here is predominantly white space. And so a lot of people who didn't look like the neighbors uh, in that space. And it was intimate, like it can be intimidating. And so that's something when we started forming, again, showing that there are black creatives and showing that it is an option here. Um, we've been in talks with other organizations who are like, well, how can we get people to come? And I was like, like our big basis is like, you have to make spaces welcoming. Like we're a welcoming safe space. And it's like, you have to put in the work to do that because those people missed out on an exhibition just because the way the art community is here and like they don't see themselves in it and it's hard to put yourself somewhere if you don't see anybody like you. Yeah I mean I definitely think that's a problem that 
the arc world, I guess, more, even more broadly deals with this, like how to not be this kind of exclusive group that's only open to people who understand art or people who have tastes or people who look a certain way. So I think that is, that's definitely something I think a lot of artists run spaces and maybe more community-based groups are trying to work against. Um, and exactly, I mean, I think especially in Peoria, I'm from Peoria, Katie's from South Bend, so we're both from the Midwest, and I, I feel like what you were um, touching on in terms of like making people feel like art is an option for you, especially certain communities who may um, have never even had like nice art supplies or something. If you go to a certain school and you just, you don't really have art classes or mm -hmm. a teacher who can encourage you or kind of like stimulate that interest. Um, for a lot of young people, it just feels like, and in the Midwest especially, just like, oh, that's not something I can pursue. So to, to work to really create uh, visibility there, I think is important. Um, and I was going to ask you, and you kind of already touched on this a little bit, but like, why do you think it's so important in places like, like the Peorias of the United States or these kind of Peoria-like cities in the Midwest, why do you think it's so important to have communities like this in these kinds of, of cities? We have a lot of wiggle room here. Like we represent a broad demographic. Um, Peoria has lots of different populations that live here and lots of space. And you get the vibe and energy of like a bigger city, but it also has aspects that feel like a smaller town. And so because of that unique sort of nexus that it exists in, you can make a lot happen with little resources. Whereas like if I tried to do something like this in Chicago, like you'll be drowned out. Like there's plenty of people and interest, but like there's so much happening. Whereas a place like here, there's a lot of good potential and like places like Peoria across uh, the country, there's just potential to make things happen and unique chances for collaboration. Like the exhibition we just mentioned was in an abandoned storefront and we got to show there for free because it was a space that was available and the person who owned it was interested in showing artwork there. And there's lots of spaces like that in Peoria and then lots of people and good energy that are interested in making things happen. So collaborations have to happen to make anything happen here, but collaborations that I don't think would happen in other places, like intersections of folks and communities collaborating that I don't think you see in a larger city. And that's like the support here in Peoria is like really close knit. So like Peoria is a more affordable like city, I wouldn't call it, like maybe a smaller metro. So you get like, actual like Target or Walmart, you get like access to Michaels and that kind of stuff, or we're close drive to Dick Blicks. Yeah. So like you get all that kind of stuff, but you also get like a small town support mm -hmm. and where people are actually trying to help each other and actually trying to help make things affordable or like work with you. So that's kind of what just makes Peoria special. Like all the friends you make, like you make so many friends and then you know it's still people you haven't met yet, yeah. like in Peoria, so. And like the strength to keep things going. I feel like a lot of towns like Peoria want stuff to happen and they're tired of like folks having to leave to make those things happen. So they just want to bring it to where they're at. And so like some, or even our local businesses too are really strong and work together and do stuff in the community and like, Nonprofits, like that's how we ended up working in public health because the intersections between like art, nonprofit work, public health, there's all these weird little cross points that happen here. Um, and it just makes a good foundation for stuff to happen. To work in. Yeah. In the art without having to worry too much about bills. Yes, you can also <laughs> have, I have a studio space and a house that I live in. Um, that I do my performance stuff in because it's affordable to live here. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Like, that's amazing because I love that because as, you know, Midwestern artists as a whole, like I feel that so much. <laughs> it's like, I have my, you know, my little house that I, you know, paint in or make art in and like, but you know, you're able to afford like a studio space or maybe rent out a gallery or like, you know, it's, like, like you said, and I love like finding those opportunities and like really seizing those. I think that is like the total, like kind of Midwest, like 
really like motivational perspective that I just love because you have to seek those opportunities that are in front of you and like just take advantage of it like and I love that you guys are doing that and creating spaces I think that is such a great way to be accessible um creating spaces and places that you know people wouldn't think of like a storefront like an abandoned you know kind of area like it's so cool um and that's where the stuff that's where the exciting stuff happens like where you guys meet and hang out and when you like have these like collaborative kind of um session excuse me sessions and things like that and that's just where the good stuff is and i love that it organically just like like you said it just happens and i love that it's that's the best that's the real art stuff right there um i don't know how to describe it otherwise but yeah, I think that um, I kind of want to segue into kind of how the guild, I'm sure um, you have a way of articulating what you guys believe as as like an artist. What does the guild see as an artist? It's kind of an opaque question, but the scope of your artistic practices, how do you combine those um, to, you know, represent the group um, and, you know, um, showcase what you do, if that makes sense. It's so we open it to like our, our verbiage we use is like black creatives. Um, but I mean, we are the Guild of Black Artists, but we use the term creatives a lot because we want to make sure that people who are involved in any kind of way with the arts or have a remote interest in the arts are there because we have designers, musicians, um, actors, uh, folks who wanting to get into art but don't know where to start. Or just um, support it. Or just the more, yeah, supporters of the arts. Um, and there is a little bit, like with some of the opportunities, um, there is a little bit of bias towards visual arts, um, just because that's like spaces want to show people's work, spaces want to show folks. And so it's like we do have a 10, we've had a lot more opportunities for the visual artists in the group, but the way we're structured, we do a lot of committees. And through the committee work, we have like a, we have a writing committee that's full of all the poets and writers in the group, and they're releasing a yeah. um, zine soon. Um, that they've been working on really hard, and like the we have a public art committee. Um, Morgan is the chair of our block party committee. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like anybody in the guild that wants to have a certain project that they are passionate about, like all they have to do is say, "Hey, I have this idea, and I want to do this." Can I make a committee for it? And we'll approve it, um, help them in any way we can. Like we have so many creatives that want to be a part of different stuff. So we all set a time to meet up and just support each other in that way. Um, and we just try to come together as best we can um, in regards to like how our different opportunities come up. We try to get everybody involved if they want to be involved. So um, like mural work. If we had a poet that wants to be involved, I would say, hey, come paint with us. If you want to make a mural, we can figure out how to do that. It could just be words on a wall mm -hmm. drawn artistically, like that's a mural. Like your words are art. So we're gonna find a way to get it into this system mm -hmm. if you say that you want to be in it. So like we had an exhibition at ISU. Um, our poets had work throughout like framed like poems or like on pieces of paper and then they came together and got to do their video um and that's them performing spoken words and it was looped in the exhibition which was so nice and we had our videographers in the group help produce that video so it's like everybody was involved and it just came out so nice and i think mostly what is important to us as a guild is that anybody that wants to get that experience can always get experiences working in the guild with us so we want to facilitate that like spirit of collaboration and like like i'm academically trained i went to school i got my mfa um and i learned a whole lot through doing that but i don't think that everybody should have to do that to have access to the skill set and knowledge that i got and so i try to share that with the community morgan is saving our life with our finances and things because she's running her own business her and another board member Chantel, both run businesses and as young black entrepreneurs they have a skill set that none of us <laughs> absolutely none of us have and so we try to get everyone who's at all interested involved to make the arts a non-intimidating space and then be like hey if you like facilitate that spirit of creativity of like if you want to do this like let's figure out how to make it happen and do it um 
and use the resources that we have to make those opportunities happen. And that like also causes us to be selective on what projects people present to us to present to the guild. Cause if we'll say like, if you wanna get specific people, like get choose specific artists from the guild, then we cannot present this to everybody in the guild. If you just want those few and you reach out to them on your own. But if you wanna present something to the entire guild, we can do that like and get everybody involved. Yeah, we try to be very like our, this is why it's taking us so long to apply for nonprofit status, but like our bylaws and things, making them as, because it's a, it's a lot of light and energy in this group and we want to protect it. And so like if folks from outside the group reach out, like, oh, we want to show some artists, like let's show the guild, but they're reaching out to only two artists. We're like, hey, you need to make this opportunity open for everybody. Everyone needs an opportunity in our organization. Um, it also passes on to like our values as a group too. Like, um, if someone wants to collaborate with us, but they say things that involve hate speech, or maybe they want to work with black artists, but they don't want to work with black LGBTQ plus artists, um, or, they we, don't pay us. or they don't want to pay us, <laughs> we t we turn them down, and it's it's very we're very transparent in that. Um, we recently released our um, list of demands. Uh, sort of like a call to action of just for any black creatives anywhere, but we just release them as a group. And it talks about like, we are a safe and affirming space. If you work with one of us, you work with all of us. Not one person of color is the voice for the whole community. We are varied and diverse. Um, and we wanna make sure that the people we work with, like we wanna protect ourselves to so the people we work with. We wanna make sure they follow those um, standards and values. Yeah, maybe I'll take this moment. Um, I'll just share my screen and kind of uh, kind of show people the website. And also maybe um, we can talk about one of the images, I think a collaborative piece that multiple members of the Guild works on together. Maybe we can talk a little bit about that. So let me go ahead and um, see if I can share everything. So I'll start with the website. So I think here on your website, you have the manifesto, which mentions some of the points um, that you were just saying. So definitely if you're listening, um, we will link the website below. Be sure to check it out. Um, there's also like a calendar of events, which is nice for anyone who may be interested um, in, you know, seeing some of the other, like we have a 2021 fall block party that I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about at the end. Um, but yeah, so definitely look at the website because there's some, some good information here. And I think also, uh, but let me see. Yeah, like membership information, um, some of the other members of the guilds, if you want to learn about their artwork, and then let me switch to that piece. Well, oh, updated a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan and Chantel, yeah. the aforementioned board members, have been doing a lot of work on our website, so there are even updates on there that I hadn't seen yet. <laughs> the website's beautiful. It looks fantastic. Yeah, maybe do you want to um, talk a little bit about this piece? I believe it's a collaborative piece, um, but correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, um, so we, when we were invited to exhibit at University Galleries at ISU, um, the curator, Jess Bingham, had a idea, because um, we have a few muralists in the group, um, and also to sort of emphasize that spirit of collaboration, she asked one of our board members, Brenda Gentry, like, would you want to facilitate a group mural project? And Brenda absolutely loves collaboration and <laughs> loves murals. And so we came up with the idea to do like a canvas mural because it'd be a little bit easier to hang and transport. And like, um, we are working out of our houses and various spaces that we meet at, but we don't have like a group studio. And so something like this is easier to transport um, and work on. And the East Bluff did a lot of work. Oh yeah, the East Bluff. And we did we did a lot of work with this in the East Bluff Community Center. Um, we used one of the offices there to do most of the painting on this. Um, but it's all silhouettes uh, of members of the guild doing various poses from a collaboration we had with Soulside Healing Arts. This is a nonprofit uh, yoga studio in town. Um, so we did a collaboration with them. And yep, <laughs> and we um, used the poses and the imagery from that and sort of the concepts of like uh, the sense of peace, that sense of self and calm. Cause like during our class, we really emphasized that it was members of the guild. It was led by a black yoga instructor. Um, and so we really focused on like finding that inner peace, finding that inner sanctuary 
And so we wanted to put that into this piece with the silhouettes. And then we invited people of the guild, even those who aren't painters to work on it. So everybody had a chance to get involved, paint some silhouettes, draw. Uh, one of our members even did a bunch of embroidery on the piece. Um, and now it's existed and it's been in a few, it was at the ISU show, it's been at, um, this is at the library, we had a library show at downtown Peoria. Um, it was at the Fine Art Fair. Um, uh, Cause it sort of, it, it captures that sort of spirit of collaboration and um, it's just a lovely backdrop for like the spirit and energy of our group. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for telling us a little bit about that. And I was um, lucky enough to see um, the ISU show, which looked great. But yeah, you could definitely tell the different kind of threads of allowing people to embrace creativity and you know whatever capacity was meaningful to them. That there was no prescription of as an artist you have to you know make work that looks a certain way or use certain materials. Um, and I think that's that's a really great shift just in general, so that people don't you know, people all over the place don't feel like art is this intimidating, again, exclusive thing. And to be an artist, you have to be trained and you have to do it when you're young. Like you can come to art in, in a very broad sense at any point in your life. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of poetry um, in the show, which I really liked too, as someone who is also really interested in literature in addition to uh, visual arts. So I just, I like that really broad approach to creatives rather than the artists and kind of rethinking what the term artist can mean and certainly emphasizing collaboration. I think it's always such a good thing. Are there any other photos you want me to, to jump to while I'm sharing my screen? I mean, you can just scroll through if you want to see this, what our, some of our meetings look like. And uh, uh, this photo is actually a recreation of the first photo that we took when we met that sort of set things off because we just posted a photo similar to this one. This is just with a lot of our newer members now uh, and said, uh, get ready Peoria, like, cause we were trying to bring that sort of, uh, again, a new kind of like Harlem Renaissance to the Peoria area. But then folks started reaching out to us and we sort of fell into a bunch of different projects from that photo. And so a year later, um, we recreated that photo. Mm -hmm. And then we usually have our meetings outside around that campfire because pandemic stuff <laughs> and bugs. So yeah. <laughs> that's usually how our meetings went outside. Um, that's me on the phone. I forgot you were blonde for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Looks so cozy in your meeting room with the plants and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, we hop between, so that's at uh, one of our board members, Brenda's house. Um, and so we sort of hop between Brenda's house, my house, the East Wolf Community Center. And now we're working with the uh, Tri-County Urban League. Um, and they've provided space for us to meet in and possible collaborations there. And so awesome. we're very uh, transient in mm -hmm. <laughs> where, we're, where we meet at. That's great. Yeah. Let's see. All right. So... Um, Maybe do you want to talk a little bit more? I know I already kind of mentioned the like fall block party, but do you want to talk about any upcoming events? Um, any things you want to share that might be happening for the group in the near future or um, like exhibitions or any other plans that you have that you just want to let people know about? Um, so usually our monthly meetings are on the third Thursdays and it looks like they're going to start being at the Tri-County Urban League since it's getting colder outside. Um, outside of that, um, I don't know if you all heard of Angie's listings on TikTok, <laughs> but um, we are probably doing like a small collaboration with her this coming Friday for the second annual transplant party they have there. Um, and we call those vibe checks when we're not having actual meetings yes. with the guild. So that'd be our vibe check and hanging out with them and the new people moving into Peoria and introducing ourselves as a guild. And then the day after that is the block party. And so we're excited about that. The weather looks okay for that day. <laughs> Not too many days leading up to that day, but it looks good that day. <laughs> so we're still got our finger crossed on that, but that's going to be indoors um, if the weather's bad or if it's too cold. So we're excited about that. A whole lot of different community organizations are coming out. Um, we get to do a coat giveaway during that from the neighborhood house. Um, they donated the rest of their coats so we can give those out to the community uh, for more days. And then um, after that, I think we're taking a small break from mm -hmm. 
ex exhibitions for the rest of the year and just kind of regrouping, uh, getting ready for Black History Month in yeah. Juneteenth next year because we want to do something special because we couldn't do something special this past year. So. Yeah, there's a few, some people have reached out, which I'm going to tell you about after this, um, <laughs> about showing uh, work. So there's a couple of exhibitions lined up for next year, but after the block party, um, we don't ever want to drift too far away from that core of like a, a space to gather and talk and hang out. And so for the rest of the year after the block party, we're going to just have our meetings, but sort of just plan for next year and take it easy um, and vibe <laughs> until uh, I think kick off 2022 with some big plans. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's so crazy. That's only two more months of the year. It's and it wild. doesn't feel like it to me. <laughs> but um, we've been working uh, on big projects with Amarin all year long. And so those are going to go into next year too. So we're probably still going to be quietly working on those things and then yeah. try to celebrate each other and family for the rest of the year. Yeah, because we, uh, we spent so much time after we started, um, things just took off so quickly that we spent a lot of time responding to things like, okay, we got invited to this exhibition, we got invited to speak at this thing, we got invited to do this. And we're just now getting to the point where we're sort of over top of a lot of those longer term commitments. Like we did some collaborations with Normal Editions at ISU, along with our exhibition there. Uh, we did a bunch of shows and some collaborations with local organizations in Peoria. And it's like, we're just now getting ahead of that. And that's why we relaunched our website um, with all of our updated information a year later, because we're finally getting to make, like we're not just responding to the things happening around us, we're getting to make our statement and make our spaces. And so um, we're gonna try to lead with that strong foot going into next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that is important just to have time to just, you know, be together and kind of, you know, review what what's going to be important for this next year and just to plan and think and exist and just enjoy, you know, that community that you've fostered so far. I think, I think everyone needs to do that. Um, so that sounds like a great plan for the rest of the year and everyone keep your eyes peeled for 2022. Yeah, um, it well, sounds so like you have some great things on the horizon. <laughs> Super excited to stay posted with everything that you guys have planned or in secret that you're going to release. <laughs> Maybe some exciting stuff happening. So that's wonderful. Um, so I'm going to conclude with, um, you know, thank you again so much, um, everybody, for joining us on episode three of The Familiar Realm with Alexander Martin and Morgan Mullen from the Peoria Guild of Black Artists. Be sure to check us, check out the links um, in the description below for more information about the Guild and their upcoming events. As always, check us out on YouTube, Instagram at The Familiar Realm. And thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on The Familiar Realm. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you. <laughs>